AWS makes it easy to deploy your workloads in AWS by creating resources such as Amazon EC2 instances, Amazon EBS volume, security groups, Lambda functions, and you name it. So in this video, I'm going to demonstrate to you the best way you can, in fact, use AWS tagging, right? And how to tag your AWS resources. This is a very important concept. So make sure you watch the video till the end. It's a short video, but I will demonstrate show you exactly how it's done and the importance of it right welcome or welcome back to claydesk my name is syed so let's dive right in how to tag aws resources and why is it necessary As your AWS usage grows to many resource types spanning multiple applications, you'll need a mechanism to track which resources are assigned to which application. So the mechanism to support your operational activities such as cost monitoring, incident management, patching, backup, and access control. So for example, in on-premise environments, the knowledge is often captured in knowledge management systems, document management systems, and on internal wiki pages, right? But with the Configuration Management Database, the CMDB, for example, you can store and manage the relevant detailed metadata using standard change control processes. Now, this approach provides governance, but requires additional effort to develop and maintain. What you can do is you can take a structured approach to the naming of resources, but resource name can only hold a limited amount of information. And here in this diagram, you'll notice the best way to tag AWS resources where you have the horse name, of course, it divided into the data center, then you have the environment, whether it's production, whether it's dev um, or QA, and then followed by the web tier, the customer service portal, and finally a unique identifier. So for example, EC2 instances have a predefined tag called name that provides similar functionality and allows you to name workloads as they're moved to the AWS. Let me next show you the use case, right? And how do we actually use it and what's the importance of it? So the, as an example, I'm gonna take the cost allegation tags. Now you can also tag other resources, but here as an example, uh, I'm gonna specify or work with the cost allegation tags. The other uh, use cases are data security, risk management, and other control they can also tag. So cost allocation refers to the assignment or distribution of incurred costs to the users or beneficiaries of those costs followed by a defined process, right? So for example, uh, you know, the cost allocation can be divided into two types, showback and chargeback. So I'm not gonna get into details of what those are, but let's dive right into the cost allocation tags and what's, you know, what's the importance. So cost allocation tags can help you or they can tell you who owns the spend and is responsible for optimizing it, what workload application or product is incurring the spend, for example, right? Which environment or stage, what spend areas are growing fastest, how much spend can be deducted from an AWS budget based on past trends, and also what was the impact of cost optimization efforts, right? Within particular workloads, application or products. So there you go. So these are important pertinent questions that tags allow you to answer and keep track of. So we know that a tag is simply a label that you or AWS assigns to an AWS resource. Now each tag consists of a key and a value. So for each resource, each tag key must be unique and each tag key can only have one value. Now you can use tags to organize your resources and cost allocation tags, for example, to track your AWS costs on a detailed level. As I mentioned earlier, it answers several of your key questions. Now, after you activate cost allocation tags, for example, AWS will use the cost allocation tags to organize your resource cost on your cost allocation report to make it easier for you to categorize and track your AWS cost. How wonderful is that? Now, it provides, of course, two types of cost allocation tags, which is an AWS gener generated tag and user defined tag. 
you can use it either way right have aws do it for you or you can specify yourself as i mentioned earlier using the naming convention that allow you to differentiate different environments and of course using a unique identifier now here in this particular diagram in this example for example you've assigned and activated tags on two amazon ec2 instances one tag called the cost center and another tag called stack each of the tags has an associated value you can also you know activated the aws generated tags for example the created by right before creating these resources the created by tag here tracks who created the resource so the user defined tags use the user prefix and the aws generated tags use the aws colon prefix right so very simple but very very effective now this way you can track who actually created the resource there can be many many resources there can be environments that your users are spinning up as a test environment for example and then tagging resources because in aws once your enterprise grows or your application grows uh, as your resource usage grows the tags could actually you know get out of hands right but it's easier for you to understand and actually understand who created this tag in this particular example so after you or aws applies the tags to your resources such as ec2 or s3 bucket you can then activate the tags in the billing and cost management console and aws generates a cost allocation report as a csv file so there you go it's easy just use the um, you know budget console the cost allocation and download the excel file and it will show you a detailed list of all the resources and who created the resource in this particular example and of course you can tag and create other reports so as an example you can see the report here for example this is a downloadable csv format or excel based file which tells you the total cost who the owner is the user stack the user cost center and user application so of course at the end of the billing cycle the total charges with the tagged and untagged on the billing report with cost allocation tags simply reconciles with the total charges on your bills all right one last important thing before i end below are the rules and some of the restrictions when you actually start to add tags to aws now of course you need to follow these so that you do them correctly for example the first rule is that the maximum number of tags per your resource for example if you're using ec2 as your resource and you want to tag your ec2 instance the number is 5050 second rule is for each resource each tag key must be unique so you cannot duplicate of course it has to be unique so it's easier for you to identify later and each tag key can have only one value rule three straightforward maximum key length is 128 characters and the maximum value length as the next rule is 256 characters so if your tagging schema for example is used across multiple services and resources you need to remember that other services may also have restrictions on allowed characters so typically what do you do you generally use allowed characters that are letters numbers and spaces that are representable in utf8 format and for example like the plus sign the underscore equals and so on the next rule is also straightforward tag keys and values are case sensitive now this is important okay so you got to keep that in mind when you are tagging your resources in aws and finally do not use aws aws is all caps or any upper or lowercase combination of such as a prefix for either keys or values now these are reserved only for aws use you cannot edit or you cannot delete either right tag keys or values with this prefix so remember anything that starts with aws you gotta watch out tags with this prefix are not taken into consideration against your tags per resource limit so these are some of the rules and restrictions so once you practice do some hands-on you get to remember when you start tagging your resources you know all these rules are applicable once you start to tag 
So there you go. Now you know exactly how to tag AWS resources, the importance of tagging AWS resources, and the best practice and using the naming convention. My name is Syed. Let me know if you have any questions. Comment down below on how your existing uh, allocation tags are working. If you're using them, uh, I'd like to kind of know, find out. So comment down below. Let me know if you have any questions. And thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.